The scene I talk about today in, in the book is um, Mother Mary MacKillop, who was uh, Australia's first saint. And I remember, you know, when um, it was announced that uh, she'd been beatified, it was announced that she was going to be canonized. Um, John Paul II was coming to Australia uh, to canonize her. I mean, just the whole country was just like a buzz. And, um, and even non-Catholics, you could, you could just tell there was this great national pride. Um, and it was all over the secular media. And, and there are these moments where, even though there's this tremendous anti-Catholic sentiment in, in our culture at times, even though there's this a real opposition to the church in our culture, there are these moments where something happens that is just so strong and so powerful and so intriguing and so attractive that it pierces through uh, that bias and that prejudice and, 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 and demands to be placed center stage in the midst of even a secular culture. And, and of course, that's what the saints did in their everyday lives. You know, I often talk about the idea that there's nothing more attractive than holiness. And, and the reason is it, it's so powerful is because holiness cuts through bias. It cuts through prejudice. You know, it cuts through uh, obstacles and oppositions. And, and it, it, it just gets beyond all of this stuff. And, and, and it, it is powerful and intriguing and attractive. And, and so this moment where uh, Australia got their first uh, canonized saint was, was a fabulous moment um, in the life of the culture. Uh, the saints, they teach us so many lessons. And, you know, the, the lesson I chose to focus on in the book uh, around Mother Mary MacKillop was, was the idea of, of coachability. Um, you know, we talk about, okay, being a disciple of Jesus and, or being a good disciple of Jesus. And what is it that makes a good disciple, you know? And, and one of the things that makes a good disciple is the willingness to be coached, you know, to be coached to a better place, to be coached to become a better disciple, to, to sit at the feet of Jesus sit with the Gospels, read about the life and teachings of Jesus, pray about the life and teachings of Jesus, and allow Jesus to coach us to live at a higher level, to live in new ways, to, to put our lives to the best and highest use every single day. And, and the saints had this. The saints were coachable. If you think about, okay, what are the essential elements of coachability? Uh, it largely comes down to humility. Uh, how humble are we? Because it takes great humility to allow ourselves to be coached. If you look at any aspect of human life, the best of the best, the champions at anything, uh, they love coaching. They love coaching because they, they love getting better at whatever it is they do. And this is true in sports, it's true in business, it's true in every aspect of life. Champions love coaching. And so the question I wanna lay before you today is, how coachable are you? You know, and when was the last time you really opened yourself up and allowed Jesus to coach you in a particular situation? When was the last time you opened yourself up and said, all right, Jesus, I got this situation. Um, I really need your help. Lead me, guide me, coach me. I'm open, I'm available, I'm coachable. Show me what to do. Because it's that coachability, that coachability and excellence, they go hand in hand, whether it's on the sporting field or in the spiritual life that coachability and excellence, they just go hand in hand. Did you know that 71% of the people that watch Matthew Kelly's videos are not subscribers? That makes no sense. We need to change that. Subscribe today.
Hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, and turn on those notifications so you never miss out on another great video ever again.